Hi guys, I'm Ruby Moonshine, and I am your favorite crafting channel. You can't tell, I'm trying to channel my inner uh, Chapel Roan. Is it Roan or Roan? Roan or Roan? Is it Roan like the horse or Roan or... I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I'm Southern and I have a lisp. Let's see if I can shoot this over towards my desk. That broke, almost broke. And I'll pick it up later. Yeah, I'm trying to channel my inner Chapel Roan because like this entire look is inspired by Chapel Roan because I had this beautiful mermaid dress and it looks absolutely fabulous. I was a little bit disappointed when it uh, only got the top portion of it in the camera. So I literally have on my pink pony earrings and my whole makeup is inspired by uh, Chapel Roan today. And I found this dress in my closet and I was like, that reminds me too much of Chapel Roan. It's glittery, it's sparkly, it's mermaidy. I'm gonna wear it. And then it only cuts off the, all you can see is my chest. <laughs> I'm so sad. I'll get over it. I get over a lot of things. But enough of my tangenting. You came to see me struggle at working on this. Ah! This little beauty took me a week to do because I kept on thinking of how I'm going to do this design. And I kept on trying out new ways of how to get the design the way I want it. And uh, ultimate fail every time I tried something new and then resorted back to my basics. I actually put this in a Briar Horse uh, Facebook group that I'm a part of and everyone thought it was supposed to be a zombie horse. It's not a zombie horse. It is a, I'll, I'll just show you what it is. Basically this is supposed to be one of these. A geode, an amethyst geode to be exact. I keep one of these on my altar at all times. What type of pagan would I be if I didn't have crystals all over my room? But anyhow, yes, I have an amethyst geode. I got it for my, actually I got it for Christmas a few years ago. My grandmother gave it to me. Actually, all the crystals I have have been given to me over the years. But yeah, it's supposed to be an amethyst geode and I tried my best to get it. Oh my gosh, this thing needs to be washed and dusted. Oh my god. For those of you who do not know me, hi, I'm Ruby, I'm Norse Pagan, and I uh, just started crystal work, so I have a lot of crystals because people keep giving me crystals when they find out, oh, she's pagan, here's a crystal. <laughs> because of the diamond mind, we have, crystals are like our state thing. In fact, it's literally such a statement, we literally have a diamond in our flag. I personally have never gone diamond mining because honestly, I'm going to, oh my gosh, every time I tell people this, it's like ruining Christmas for a toddler. I'm about to tell you guys Santa isn't real. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, it's the only diamond mine in America and honestly, the reason why it's a tourist trap is because there's not enough diamonds out there for there to actually be a real mind out of it. So they made it into a tourist trap so they could get more money out of it. And still people find diamonds out there. I've heard a rumor, and this is just a rumor, I don't even believe it honestly. I just like bringing it up for shits and giggles, but uh, the rumor is that the state, since it's a state park, they buy cubic zirconiums and put out there so people will find cubic zirconiums and then they have a free diamond testing uh, lab out there, like people who actually test to see if it's diamonds or not. And they just tell people, oh, you found a diamond, when actually it's a cubic zirconium. Honestly, it sounds a little bit expensively crazy, but uh, I don't believe it. But uh, yeah, that's a rumor. That's a real rumor that the park rangers put out cubic zirconiums down there to, oh my gosh, that, that it is a funny conspiracy theory, but it's my favorite conspiracy theory. 
But anyhow, I always wanted to make a diamond or crystal inspired uh, briar horse and I finally got around to doing it. I was inspired by my favorite crystal, which is amethyst, in order to uh, make this design because I love geodes. And oftentimes, if you go into museums here or if you go to rock shops here, you will see a huge, like we have lots and lots of rock shop and crystal shops here and oh my gosh you will just walk in and see like a giant amethyst geode and they are so beautiful I love them honestly you can just feel the energy radiating off of them also if you are planning on making a trip to the Arkansas diamond mine I highly recommend you go to hot springs to the crystal mine and they make you pay by the pound for crystals and geodes that's how much you will find. Trust me, I've done it before. I absolutely adored it. I love, but mostly I prefer crystals over diamonds any day of the week. But for any future suitors of mine, uh, propose to me with a Shetland pony. I'll automatically say yes. <laughs> or a briar horse. But anyhow, me being an Arkansan, I always wanted to make a crystal or a diamond inspired, uh, briar horse and I was thinking of actually doing a diamond inspired uh, Arabian with my favorite Arabian mold that I have and I always get because I love that briar horse mold but um, no I decided to do a geode one and let's just get right into the video and cut out my tangent. This will be the model I'll be using for the base for today and it is a briar model so yeah I'm I first started out by sketching out where I wanted to carve and have my geode actually placed into the horse. Then slowly but surely I start the painstaking process of gutting the horse model out with a sander so I can place the geode. This was a process. It took me about three days to sand it to where of both sanding and eventually melting it down and scooping it out with a spoon, using a heat gun to melt it out and scooping out with a spoon, which I did off camera because yeah, I got fed up and annoyed and I'm sorry for that. <laughs> One day later. Finally, after hours and hours of sanding, scooping, melting, I finally get to spray paint it. And at first I accidentally sprayed it with a clear garnish. And now I'm spraying it with just white spray paint, making sure it's a good base coat and fully covered. And now I'm moving in with a gray layer. I mixed a bunch of shades of gray and a little dash of blue to make that first layer so we can actually get that beautiful gray roan color. I decided to go with a gray roan for this, mostly because gray roans look more like a geode rock, like the outer layer of a geode rock, more than any other horse I have seen. So I'm just going to mix it and then I slowly go in with darker shades. I first start out with the lightest shade and then add black to make the shade more darker and darker and darker until I get this nice looking something really similar to well this was my reference picture so here you go 
Here's one of my many failed mistakes at trying to try something new with my techniques. I first started doing it with pastels and then I realized I didn't have a dark black pastel so I went in with eyeshadow and when that didn't work I just took some black paint and said screw it and wanted black uh, with black paint. So yeah that's how I got this effect. Now what you see me doing right here is blotting it with my hands to make it pull off some of the paint, basically make this very watercolory type looking gradient kind of color. I don't know what to call it. I, I, I don't know what you're even talking about. Also for anybody wondering why I have nails on in this video, I got my nails done for vacation and then after I had to remove them because my job, my boss said that I could no longer have long nails and I needed to cut them or I get fired. <laughs> what you see me doing right here is taking some clear UV nail gel and molding it and then quickly stuffing it inside the hole. After I take this spoon and like even it up a little bit, I then take this wax paper and put it in there to give it its crinkled uh, crystal like look and then I pop it in the UV light and for about 30 seconds it's good to go. Afterwards I took my beautiful new shimmery new watercolor uh, set I just got and used the UV clay and just dye the UV clay using the watercolor set and I'm making sure to give it a nice purple color so I can make it into a purple gradient, you know, kind of resembling a amethyst crystal. After that, I quickly used some dark purple UV resin and quickly stuck the wax paper back onto it and stuck it back into the black light. I then took some watercolor and used it to touch up the black on the face and the hooves. And just when I finally finish the horse, I finally get that last layer done. I finally just spray on the shellac and the matte top coat. That's when the Fire Nation started to attack. So I just finished this Blue Roan Amethyst Geode. And it was looking pretty good. I had thought it was already dry. And I cured it under a black light, so I surely it would be dry. Alas, I go to pick it up and I feel something wet and squishy. And I look on my fingers and notice white paint. And I'm like, even though I did use white paint as the base, how, how did it get, did it not feel a cure? Apparently, I did not get the belly of it very cured and it didn't dry very well. And, and it turns out the white paint did not cure in this unfortunate area. I'm not fixing it. I'm not fixing it. A few inches later. Well, I'm personally done with this bullshit. But nonetheless, finally finished the horse. Now you go on the bookcase of honor. But anyhow, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm going to go get me a beer after this bullshit.